we're in a situation that we didn't expect to be because now we have the potential for criminal liability um, seemingly right around the corner. But what about all those lawsuits already levied against P. Diddy? The first thing I thought was there is stuff she knows that he does not want coming out uh, because that is an incredibly quick settlement. From Cassie to Lil Rod and allegations ranging from the 90s to now, we're taking a closer look at everyone who's filed suit against P. Diddy. I think we're about to see something on the level of uh, Epstein, Weinstein, to the power of 10. And with multiple federal raids on Diddy's properties in California and Florida, Experts say it could be only a matter of time before Diddy is in cuffs. I want to be clear. I don't think he could be. I think he's going to be. This week started with bombshell news that two of P. Diddy's homes were being raided by Homeland Security. P. Diddy, Diddy, Puff, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, whatever you want to call him, the 54-year-old rapper, label exec, and producer faces some pretty serious allegations on the civil side of things, which we'll get to soon. But as for the criminal side of things, there's still a lot of question marks, including whether Diddy is even the target of the raids that happened at his homes in Holmby Hills, California, and on Star Island in Miami. We spoke to former homicide prosecutor Bernarda Villalona about this one. Just because his, uh, there was a search warrant that was executed at his home, again, doesn't mean that he was a target of the search warrant. But of course, you know, by just the in reasonable inferences that you can make that he is the target of the search warrant, it could take some time. Because number one, if they did take any electronic devices from his home or from his person, they have to be able to conduct a forensic examination from those devices. And it will depend. Are there passcodes? Are they able to break those passcodes and get through those uh, devices in order to get that information. And then what is in those electronic devices? Is there anything that's incriminating in those criminal devices that can be used against them? Because again, it's not about making an arrest, especially when you're talking about Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, Sean Diddy Combs. You want to make sure that if he is arrested and he is prosecuted, that you can prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt. So you want to make the best and strongest case possible in the very beginning before you make an arrest. So to be honest, it can be any day or it can be months from now or nothing can happen. They can say we don't have enough credible evidence to prove his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt and leave it at that. Because again, a civil lawsuit is completely different than a criminal prosecution. Civil lawsuit, the burden is more likely than not, as opposed to a criminal prosecution, you have to be able to prove his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. And you don't want to get left with egg on your face if you don't get a conviction. We also spoke to law and crime legal analyst Julie Rendelman about the raids. She says it smells trouble for Diddy. I think anytime you have Homeland Security raiding both of your homes, um, you know that, that there's potential trouble um, heading in your direction. So do you think that criminal charges will eventually be filed? Any attorney, um, whether it be a federal or state prosecutor or defense attorney who hears uh, that, that P. Diddy's home, both homes have been raided by federal agents, is going to think the exact same thing, that he is very, very likely headed towards criminal charges. And what sort of criminal charges would he face? I know that there's allegations of sex trafficking, drug trafficking, even gun trafficking. Is it possible he faces all of those? Absolutely. I think we're going to, if we're going to see charges, we're going to see those charges, just like you mentioned, very similar to what we saw in R. Kelly. Um, it, it seems to be the almost the exact pattern uh, that we saw in that case in terms of civil suits and then suddenly uh, we're headed towards criminal prosecution. So I think we're going to see, uh, and again, I'm guessing uh, a very similar uh, timeline and road uh, that we saw previously with R. Kelly. So let's take a closer look at those civil suits because that does kind of mirror R. Kelly and then now what's going on with P. Diddy. So the one most recently that was filed last month was by Lil Rod. It was almost 100 pages and there were several huge bombshells and celebrity names that were dropped. Did you have a chance to look at that? What do you think of that lawsuit? Well, that's the most recent lawsuit and it, that one distinguishes itself um, because that one is from 
I, I believe in the in 2022 uh, we're talking about when he worked with him, I, I think for about a year. Um, and part of the bombshell, I think, is not just the names that we're hearing, but also the potential, because he talks about having video um, of some of these alleged illegal activities. And so it is possible that it's not just his word, but there might be actual picture or video corroboration um, that would make it much more difficult for P. Diddy in terms of defense strategy, if in fact that exists, and, and, and if in fact what's on it is criminal in nature. So let's start with Lil Rod's lawsuit against Diddy, because it dropped some major bombshells. And experts we spoke to say it was likely that suit and the mention of hidden cameras that led to the feds searching Diddy's homes. Well, I think the main piece of evidence that they're looking for is video recordings or cell phones or anything having to deal with cameras. Because from the civil lawsuits that have been filed, specifically the one that was filed by the mail just in February, he states that there are video recordings and that Puffy had secret cameras cameras that were located in the different rooms inside of the home. So by law enforcement recovering those video cameras, recovering laptops, recovering cell phones, they're able to investigate and do a forensic investigation into those electronic devices and try to get additional evidence as to a crime that has taken place, which will be able to move along any criminal investigation towards possible charges. So this lawsuit was filed by Rodney Jones, also known as Lil Rod. In the 74 pages of suit, he lays out some pretty serious allegations against Diddy, including that Diddy sexually assaulted Lil Rod, facilitated sex and drug trafficking schemes, and recorded much of his illegal activity. Lil Rod also name dropped some major celebrities. Lil Rod says the incidents happened between September 2022 and the date of the filing, which was February 26th of this year. According to the suit, Lil Rod's relationship with Diddy began in August 2022 when, quote, Mr. Jones received a call from Mr. Combs requesting that he produce several songs on a rhythm and blues album titled The Love Album, Off the Grid, Love Album. The next line of the lawsuit is chilling. It reads, quote, Mr. Jones agreed and his life has been detrimentally impacted ever since. We know according to the lawsuit that Lil Rod lived with Diddy for months at a time. He produced nine songs for Diddy's latest album, The Love Album. Lil Rod even alleges that Diddy promised him things in order to keep him quiet, like $250,000 to buy instruments, ownership of Diddy's $20 million property in Miami, and even a Grammy for producer of the year. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. The lawsuit goes on to state that Diddy even said he's willing to kill his mother, Janice Combs. On top of all this, Lil Rod says his allegations are corroborated with hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff and his guests engaging in some serious illegal activity because Diddy apparently required Lil Rod to record him constantly. So what exactly are these allegations? We'll refer back to Bernarda on that one. I'm sure that those people that are named in that lawsuit are very nervous right now, very nervous, even more nervous now after the execution of that search warrant, but also nervous because he revealed about these secret recordings and they're wondering whether they could have been secretly recorded. Are there recordings of them engaging in these type of activities? Because even though it may not be criminal, some of those activities, it still does tarnish their image. So they can still take a toll in terms of their branding. But in terms of the lawsuit itself, it's very damaging. You got to think that several companies have already distanced themselves from Puffy and there haven't been any criminal charges. All you see is a civil lawsuit. So I think there's still going to be more things that are going to come about as a result of that civil lawsuit. But I think the most damaging, again, is Cassie's lawsuit. But more importantly, I think is Little, Little Rod's um, lawsuit that was filed. Lil Rod alleges he was, quote, the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by Mr. Combs. At times, Lil Rod says Diddy touched his private areas without consent and forced Lil Rod to watch him shower or have naked body massages. Lil Rod says Diddy, quote, attempted to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in gay sex. That leads to the first celebrity name drop, Cuba Gooding Jr. 
I don't know that Cooper Gooding Jr. is going to escape from that one. That's former prosecutor Melba Pearson. We spoke with her at length about these allegations. According to the suit, Lil Rod alleges Diddy was, quote, grooming him to pass him off to his friends. This fear became reality when Mr. Combs introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. while they were on Mr. Combs's yacht. There's actually photos of their interaction together too, which are laid out in the court docs. In the first pic, you see Diddy and Cuba talking with Diddy's arms on Cuba's, and then in the next pic, Cuba has his arm around Lil Rod and is smirking. Court docs go on to state, quote, Cuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, and the small of his back near his buttocks and his shoulders. I I am getting the feeling where there's smoke, there's fire, right? Because now we have two different instances where you're accused of the same type of behavior, you know, years apart. I, I think there's something there. And I don't know that Cooper Gooding Jr. is going to escape from that one because he already saw definitely people moving away from him within Hollywood circles and other circles once those first sexual assault allegations came out. So at this point, I don't think he's going to get, get away with it a second time. Back in 2019, Cuba was booked on misdemeanor charges of forcible touching and sexual abuse after allegedly groping a woman in Times Square. By the next year, three women had come forward, accusing him of non-consensual sexual touching. He eventually reached a deal with prosecutors that required six months of counseling, but no jail time. So far, we haven't heard a comment from Cuba about these specific allegations. But Lil Rod also mentions Jennifer Lopez, who he says carried an illegal firearm for Diddy that was used during a 1999 nightclub shooting in New York. Apparently, there's some sort of dispute broke out and a shooting occurred. Now, little Rod is alleging that J-Lo brought the firearm in her purse to the club and then handed it off to you know, either Diddy or Shine or whoever the person was that actually committed the, the actual threatening or, or shooting. And so, you know, basically, the allegations from little Rod were that Diddy or Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, confessed to him that he was the one that did the shooting. Now, in a court of law, it played out a lot differently because back in 1999, all of them were arrested, including J-Lo, Diddy, and Shine. J-Lo's charges were dropped immediately, but both Diddy and Shine ended up proceeding to trial. And so Diddy was acquitted at trial, Shine was not. He ended up being convicted on weapons charges and reckless endangerment and ended up going to prison as a result. So I can see Shine being a little upset right now, especially in light of the fact that there was evidence that may have possibly acquitted him. So I'm very curious to see what you know legal avenues that Shine might be exploring, especially in the wake of this confession, or will he leave well enough alone and say, listen, I did my time. It's all ancient history. Let's just kind of move on with things. So that's going to be, I think, very interesting moving forward in terms of his confession or alleged confession and what may result from that. Then there's the matter of Prince Harry, who Lil Rod mentions just once, almost in a throwaway line. The court docs read in part, quote, Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties. Affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Combs' sex trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to celebrities, such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry. So Prince Harry isn't really accused of anything, he's just name dropped in the suit. It's possible that Prince Harry may be able to preserve his reputation. But again, just in light of everything him and the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, have been through, I, I truly really hope that, you know, he's able to completely distance himself, maybe make a statement, because again, since he's not necessarily under the uh, umbrella of the royal family directly that so in other words buckingham palace would not be releasing a statement on his behalf it would be him releasing a statement and saying yes i went to x party but no i never engaged in any inappropriate behavior or other details that he may see fit to share um so that's going to be 
you know, we're going to have to wait and see on that one. But again, since it was such a minuscule mention in the con greater context of this filing, he may be okay. But back to Diddy. Lil Rod says he would lace alcohol and give it to minors and sex workers. Lil Rod also alleges Diddy drugged him. One night, he, quote, began feeling lightheaded and recalls passing out and waking up at 4 a.m. the following morning naked with a sex worker sleeping next to him. Lil Rod also mentions several other defendants in the case, including Christina Corum, who's Diddy's chief of staff. Lil Rod goes so far as to compare her to Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's longtime companion, who was eventually convicted on federal sex crime charges. Lil Rod alleges she and others received financial benefits in return for assistance, support, and facilitation of Combs' sex trafficking venture. So far, we haven't heard any response from Christina Corum. Next, let's move on to the drug allegations. That's body camera video of 25-year-old Brendan Paul, who was arrested on Monday. In Lil Rod's lawsuit, he's described as the one who, quote, acquires and distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and guns. Paul was arrested while trying to board Diddy's private plane in Miami. He was booked on controlled substance charges and later released on $2,500 bail. So, so far, Brendan has only been arrested for possession of a controlled substance, and this is for the narcotics that they recovered, I believe, in one of his bags that was on the airplane where, where he was um, stopped in the airport, Miami airport, on Monday. So, they haven't linked that to Puffy at all. As of now, it's just for the simple possession, which is still a felony. The question that I will have and would I'm curious to see what will happen is that whether they're going to use those charges against Brendan to try to flip him, to try to get him to cooperate against any type of uh, prosecution against Puffy or others. Again, no criminal charges have been filed against Diddy, but if they are, investigators may want to hear more from Brendan Paul. You talked about him flipping or working with prosecutors, investigators, and giving more details. What would all of that look like behind the scenes? Ooh, well, it's something that we're not supposed to know about, but given that I used to be a prosecutor for 16 years, when it comes to cooperating, well, number one, he has to be willing to cooperate. And that's going to be a conversation between the prosecutors and his attorneys, and his attorneys will talk to Brendan to see whether that's an avenue they want to take. I mean, personally, depending on how much exposure he has in terms of jail or how much exposure he has about pending other charges that can come come about this entire investigation. It may be a question where he's like, it's not worth it for him to cooperate because he'll be scared of any backlash. He'll be scared of being blacklisted in the industry and he'll just be scared in general that he'll be known as a person that cooperated against Puffy. But this is a conversation that he needs to have with his attorney and also for the prosecutors to determine whether they're even willing to offer any type of cooperation deal to um, Mr. Paul. We received a statement from Brendan Paul's attorney, Brian Bieber, after his arrest. It reads, quote, We do not plan on trying this case in the media. All issues will be dealt with in court. From Lil Rod's lawsuit, we move on to another civil suit, filed by Cassandra Ventura, Diddy's ex, who you probably know as Cassie. Cassie filed this lawsuit under New York's Adult Survivors Act. The act meant that between November 2022 and November 2023, sexual assault survivors could file civil suits against their alleged predators, regardless of whether the statute of limitations had passed. Back to Julie to explain this one. So several of the lawsuits were filed with, uh, within the Adult Survivors Act, and that allowed for individuals who had allegations from many, many years before to have almost a look back window, a look back window, I believe it's of one year um, to enable them to file civil lawsuits for cases that normally would have been beyond the statute of limitations. Um, and so Cassie, along with several others, took advantage of uh, that, that short change in the law to enable them uh, to file civil suits against uh, P. Diddy. In her lawsuit, Cassie stated she endured years of abuse at the hands of Diddy saying he was prone to uncontrollable rage and frequently beat her savagely. They started working together when he was 37 and she was just 19 years old. 
She says Diddy began, quote, almost immediately asserting possession and control over her and inserting himself into all aspects of her career and her personal life. That includes things like forcing Cassie to use illegal drugs and have sex with prostitutes as Diddy watched or masturbated. Cassie's lawsuit also states that multiple times each year, Mr. Combs would violently beat Ms. Ventura, leaving bruises on her body. He would go on to hide Ms. Ventura in hotels for days at a time to let her bruises heal. Then there's the allegations that Diddy blew up Kid Cudi's car when he began flirting with Cassie. In the end, Cassie settled the lawsuit outside of court just one day after it was filed. Okay, so Cassie, pretty serious allegations in the lawsuit filed by Cassie that Diddy raped her, sexually assaulted her, forced her to have sex with a prostitute, carry a gun, some pretty serious things. And then only one day after this lawsuit is filed, it's settled outside of court. Why would it be settled so quickly outside of court? You know, I, re I remember when it happened and when it happened so quickly. And when I read that, I, I, I the first thing I thought was there is stuff she knows that he does not want coming out um, because that is an incredibly quick settlement. Now, again, the, his attorneys will and will always say this is no acknowledgement of guilt and people do settle outside of court um, even when they haven't done anything wrong. That happens all the time. Um, but um, we're not looking at this in a vacuum and we're certainly not looking at it in a vacuum anymore um, because we know that he settled and we now know that there is potential criminal charges coming down the line. Uh, so th there's probably much more significance to what Cassie, uh, the information Cassie had uh, that may come to light sooner than later. Even though we didn't hear more details from Cassie, only what was alleged in her lawsuit, is it possible now that federal investigators are speaking with Cassie to learn more and if Diddy is ever charged that she could testify against him? Absolutely. Now, remember a lot of these settlements end with some type of non-disclosure agreements, um, but the non-disclosure agreements pretty much go out the window uh, when it comes to uh, cooperating with federal authorities. It doesn't mean people are always going to want to be cooperative um, and an NDA may prevent them from wanting to be cooperative, but it's not going to stand in the way of them speaking to her and anyone else that may have had a settlement in which it included an NDA. I'm guessing they're speaking to her and they're speaking to every single person mentioned in any lawsuits that occurred any other individuals that may have information and any information and any witnesses witnesses that come from the interviews with those individuals. Is it possible that the details laid out in Cassie's lawsuit are what led to this federal probe of Diddy's homes? Anything is possible. Um, it is not surprising um, when we see all of the recent allegations that were coming up that we're now seeing a, a potential federal investigation. And remember, Sierra, we've been hearing about uh, this in regards to allegations against P. Diddy for years. Um, and again, I hate to say this is just like R. Kelly. Um, and so it shouldn't be surprising that once we have uh, various witnesses coming forward with very specific allegations that the feds are going to eventually take a look and say, you know, there might be something here uh, that we need to look more carefully at. One lawsuit that may not be settled outside of court is that of Joy Dickerson Neal, whose civil suit literally says she demands a jury trial. When you're talking about very specific allegations, it also made me think about another lawsuit. That's Joy Dickerson Neal, who similarly to Cassie filed under the Adult Survivors Act. So she alleged this was all the way back in 1991 that Diddy raped her, sexually assaulted her, similarly recorded this on video. The difference here between her and Cassie is that Joy Dickerson Neal demands that there is a trial, won't be settled outside of court. Why might that be? Well, it, you know, it's interesting. One would argue that a, an individual that says, I refuse to settle outside of court um, and want a trial to be heard is because they want uh, themselves to be heard. Uh, they want people to understand that they were victimized by this individual. Um, and they're not just looking in a sense for a payoff. Um, and so that could be one of many reasons why she's choosing to do that. Similar to Cassie, Joy filed suit under the New York Adult Survivors Act last November. 
Her allegations date back to 1991, when she was a psychology student at Syracuse University. Joy knew Diddy because they had mutual friends and she had appeared in a few of his music videos. So the pair went on a date, but Joy says Diddy intentionally drugged her, resulting in her being in a physical state where she could not independently stand or walk. After that, she alleges Diddy raped her and recorded it all on video. She found out about this video days later when a friend revealed he'd seen it. Joy's lawsuit states she felt confusion, pain, embarrassment, and shame, so she did not go to the hospital or report the assault to police and sought refuge in her apartment, avoiding any outside contact. She calls this part of her life a tailspin. She dropped out of college and struggled with suicidal ideations, enough to admit herself into a psychiatric treatment. Because of this, her classmates labeled her as crazy. Years later, she says she ran into Diddy, who dramatically got down on his knees before insisting that he wanted her to believe him when he said he did not do what she was saying. Joy demands a jury trial, and so does another accuser who filed civil suit against Diddy. That's Liza Gardner. She also filed under the Adult Survivors Act and lists another male defendant, Aaron Hall, in addition to Diddy. So she includes him in this lawsuit with Diddy. Is that a reason that it sets us itself apart from the other civil lawsuits? Not necessarily. I mean, it's interesting to see another name, but remember in the other lawsuits they've mentioned, sometimes the music company and other individuals along the way um, that, that, that they believe bear some responsibility. Um, I think it's interesting to note that in that specific case, she's not only claiming sexual abuse, but she's claiming physical abuse, which we don't see in every single lawsuit. I know we saw it in, in Cassie's, um, but that is one thing that sets those two individuals apart from some of the others. Liza's allegations date back to New York in 1990. She met Diddy and Aaron Hall at an event and the pair were handsy with Liza and one of her friends. Liza and the friend went to an after party where she, quote, was offered more drinks and was coerced into having sex with Combs. The lawsuit goes on to allege, quote, after Combs finished doing his business, Liza Gardner laid in bed, shocked and traumatized. As she was in the process of getting dressed, Hull barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced Liza Gardner to have sex with him. Then, days later, Liza alleges Diddy came to the place where she was staying and was irate. The lawsuit says he, quote, began assaulting and choking Liza Gardner to the point that she passed out. Moving on to the next one, that's Jane Doe. And it's another similar allegation that she was 17 years old, she was drunk, thus couldn't give consent, and yet Diddy raped her, and she's still 20 years later suffering from emotional distress. What's interesting in this case and separates itself from the others is that she hasn't revealed her name. She's going by Jane Doe. What is the reason that someone wouldn't want to reveal their identity? Uh, what's the reason that anyone who's making an accusation against a high profile celebrity would choose to not have their name out there? One, they're concerned about potential threats against them. They want to protect their anonymity, their privacy. Um, and so it's not unusual that we've seen it. We've seen it on multiple other cases, especially when someone's alleging that at the time that the allegation occurred, they were underage. Um, and so it's it's not unique um, to hear of a Jane Doe suing an individual. And quite frankly, in regards to if there's criminal allegations, you may very well see uh, allegations against various Jane Doe's, Jane Doe 1, 2, 3, which we've seen in prior uh, criminal cases in the past. While Jane Doe doesn't list her name in the lawsuit, she does list multiple photos of herself and Diddy. Her allegations date back to 2003, when she was just 17 years old and in 11th grade. Her lawsuit states at this time, Diddy was twice her age and one of the most well-known and influential music artists of all time. She met one of Diddy's friends, Harvey Pierre, who was listed as a defendant in her lawsuit at a nightclub near Detroit. So Harvey Pierre says Diddy would love to meet Jane Doe and even calls him on the phone. After that, they take a private jet to New York, but not before Harvey Pierre allegedly, quote, began to smoke crack cocaine from what appeared to be an aluminum can and forced Jane Doe to perform oral sex on him. Once in New York, Jane Doe says the evening became a blur, but that she was raped by Diddy, Harvey Pierre, and an unidentified other person. Just to note, Harvey Pierre hasn't made any public statements about Jane Doe's allegations. 
The lawsuit includes specific notes about Diddy, though, saying, quote, he told her that he could not orgasm and asked her to squeeze his nipples as hard as she could to help him get off. We know Cassie has already settled with Diddy, as has his former personal chef, who sued him back in 2017, saying he sexually assaulted her. Julie says anything is possible for the other lawsuits, though. So as far as the civil litigation in that specific lawsuit, what would that look like if it eventually does go to further court proceedings or could it be settled outside of court? What do you expect with that? We don't know. And remember, now we're, we're, we're in a situation that we didn't expect to be because now we have the potential for criminal liability um, seemingly right around the corner. Now, we certainly saw that P. Diddy had um, settled some of the lawsuits um, and had not settled this one. Who knows what was going on behind closed doors uh, before we heard about the raids? I'm guessing right now, based on what's happening, there's not going to be any settlements anytime soon for any of the civil pending suits. Usually the money settlements are confidential, and so we often never find out. Keep in mind that if there is a criminal case and a criminal trial, we may learn more details about some of the settlements in regards to any uh, of the cases that are pending um, and, and ones that would eventually be settled. And is it possible that additional civil suits could be filed against Diddy? Well, it, it is possible. Remember, there is a deadline regarding the Adult Survivors Act, but we saw that there was a recent civil suit in regards to allegations against P. Diddy from less than a year and a half ago. Uh, so we really don't know who potentially is going to come out uh, and file additional civil suits against him. So even if no more civil suits are brought against Diddy, we could hear from more accusers. And we know these really serious allegations from five people, potentially more. But if criminal charges are filed against P. Diddy, is it possible that there are even more accusers that come forward or more people that investigators speak with? Absolutely. And I, I think that's one of the things um, that we're all kind of waiting for, um, because obviously we know about the civil lawsuits. And, and keep in mind, just because you file a civil lawsuit doesn't mean you're telling the truth and doesn't mean a crime happened. And also remember, many of these crimes alleged happened years and years ago. And so the, Fed, the feds are going to want to have corroboration, some support for these events happening, maybe other witnesses that were there when it happened. Um, I think we saw this in the Epstein case, um, you know, where, you know, it's not just uh, the victims testifying, it's other individuals that were there and saw certain events happening in real time. And so I think it's really possible that it's not just going to be involving the people we know about in the civil suit. It may very well involve people that we've never heard about before. If you are Diddy's defense attorney, what sort of moves are you making right now? The one thing the defense attorneys are going to want is information. Um, they're going to want to be in touch, not just with the agents, but with potentially the U.S. Attorney's Office, if in fact someone's assigned to the case. Uh, they're going to want to know kind of a trajectory of what's going to happen. They're going to want to remember, if, if this is a situation where he's going to be arrested, the first thing they're going to care about is bail, uh, because they're going to want to make sure they procure a situation where he is not incarcerated during the pendency of this case. I think that's going to be the first thing. The second thing they're going to want to know is who are the potential witnesses? What are they saying? Is there anything inconsistent? Can they come up with um, and investigate those witnesses to see if they've said different things in the past? Um, so I think that there's going to be so many things that are going into being his attorney right now. But I think the number one thing is information in regards to what's happening at that U.S. Attorney's Office. And according to Julie, it's only a matter of time before Diddy is charged criminally. I, I want to be clear. I don't think he could be. I think he's going to be. Um, I think it's a matter of time. I think any time you have federal agents going to the home, um, two homes uh, to raid them, that indicates there's probable cause for them to believe that not only a crime happened, but that they're going to be able to recover something in that home that is relevant to that crime. So I think that it's very likely we're going to be looking at criminal charges. The question is when. And so I think that 
it really depends on what the evidence is that they recover and, and its significance. I mean, remember if they're recovering, for example, a computer, they're gonna need to review what's on that computer. Um, so I, I think we, we may see it, but it might not be for several months ahead. For Diddy's side of things, here's everything we've heard so far. After several of these lawsuits were filed last fall, Diddy himself released a statement reading, quote, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. In regards to Lil Rod's lawsuit, Diddy's attorney Sean Hawley says, quote, his reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls. We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. In response to the raids of Diddy's home this week, his attorney released a statement on Tuesday reading, quote, Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs's residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and the hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. We've reached out to Lil Rod about his lawsuit and the other women who've also filed suit, but so far, we haven't heard back. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.